So there was something I really wanted to discuss when it comes to product reviews, camera stuff, and the like. I make videos about largely the Micro Four Thirds system with the camera lenses and all of that that combines it. I have my GH4, I have my G85 that I film almost everything on, and most of my content revolves around the G85. As I'm getting more comments and interaction, I'm kind of realizing that a lot of people are looking for the best quote unquote lens slash body slash settings for one particular camera or what's the best lens for that particular camera. And I wanted to discuss the idea of best because I wanted to give you three examples of why best is very much relative because what's best for me and what I'm shooting is gonna be very different than what's best for you and what's your shooting. Whenever you see a comment on my video when somebody's asking, is this the best camera for X? Is this the best lens for Y? I always respond with, well, that depends Depends. What are you shooting? That is the number one thing that I need to know before I can even give you any sort of advice. I have an idea of what might work best for different situations through my limited experience. First example is gonna be this. I have the GH4 here with the Glidecam XR2000. The GH4 is a few years old, and for a lot of people, this is not going to be the camera for them. I just wanted to point out that the GH4, terrible autofocus, really great image quality, not very good in low light, but it has a lot of pro video video features that are really nice for me. Now it doesn't have in-body image stabilization, so I might use the G85 for other applications, but for weddings, the GH4 is a camera that I'll be using quite a bit. The reason I have both the Glidecam XR2000 and the GH4 is because the GH4 doesn't have in-body image stabilization. Now you might ask, why don't you use the G85? Well, that's because the 60p on the G85 is at such a low bit rate that I would rather have more room to play with the GH4's footage. It makes sense that I would want to buy the GH4 and the Glidecam XR2000 for stabilization. So if somebody asks, is the G85 best for weddings? Then I would say, well, it really depends on what you want to do with it. If you want to do heavy grades with the 60p, then maybe not. But if you want to do fairly light grades and you really care about that in-body image stabilization, then the G85 would be a really great option for that. But for me, it just works out a lot better to shoot with the GH4 all day. Another thing that was curious to me was I thought having the Sigma 17 to 50 would be great for the wedding day but it actually turned out that I didn't use it barely at all. I used it for some establishing shots, but for the rest of the day, having a really small compact lens for the wedding ended up working so much better for me. That just made so much more sense to go all primes with the GH4 and the Glidecam XR2000. So that works for me. I can't guarantee it'll work for you. And if we're honest, you can make a great film no matter what camera you have. Second and third example is the Sony a6000 and the Gorillapod 1. K. So I made a video, will the Gorillapod hold the Sony a6000 cameras? Probably it won't. So it's not a good application for that need. So I didn't really want to label the video. This bendy tripod is the best. I'd rather have it as, will it hold a Sony a6000? And then leave that story loop open for you to find out if it will. Because if somebody has that niche problem of wondering if the 1K will hold it, then that video will solve that problem. But I didn't want to make it just the 1K is the greatest Gorillapod on the face of the earth, because that just wouldn't be honest. I really want to build my channel around filmmaking and I'm just not interested in making big obnoxious videos about more general things. I would rather be more honest and say it ultimately depends on the situation that you're using this particular piece of gear in. And I sold my uh, Gorillapod 1K because it doesn't work for me anymore. I also sold my Sony a6000. I had a different video about why I did that for my G85 because the G85 works so much better for my situation. The Sony a6000 was an amazing camera as like a hybrid shooter. I shot some really beautiful portraits on the a6000 and the Sigma 30 1.4. It was truly a great hybrid camera because I wanted to do weddings, because I wanted to record in 95-ish degree weather outside for extended periods of time without overheating. It wasn't going to end up working for me in my situation, but that does not mean the Sony a6000 is a bad camera and that you can't shoot great video on it. But for me, it is not a great camera for what I'm shooting. And that's all I'm really trying to get at in this video. Anyways, as this channel moves forward, I just wanted to share that. So long story short, some lenses, some bodies, they're gonna work better for me than they're going to for you. If you have any questions about the G85, the GH4, or the lenses that I've been using, let me know in the comments. Hopefully I can be of some help. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all this Saturday, I guess.